Octavia Spencer, and he's got um, all kinds of things to talk to you about. I'll let you know. <laughs> Let's get How's it going, Greg? Good. How are you doing? Good. Hey, I'm Greg Trippy. I was the composer for the Blumhouse movie Ma. I've also done Dark Places, Rememory, and Manhunt to the Bomb. Awesome. So Ma was actually a very interesting movie, actually. Uh, the dynamics of it, I've seen African American women being together. Um, considering that that dynamic was different, was the preparation to score that different? You know, I don't think for that particular aspect of it it changed anything about the score, but, you know, so much of the score came about just by feeding off the performances in it, so Octavia Spencer had a really specific style and uh, delivery that she came up with for the character, and so much of that improved when the music sounded, it just, you know, just vibed up when you watch it, you kind of see how it, how it makes you right, so I, I probably attribute a big part of it to just how she acts, and what her mannerisms are, and what her style is. Yeah. Oh I'm um, also a bloom house too, I mean, you know what it is a production of theaters, the, the style of horror and horror is always going to be top tier. Is there like a sense of like unraveling for it, for working with, for, with a project like that? Like, do they just, I, I feel like with their work, they look more loose than other projects. So do you actually go in there with the same mindset of saying, or having more greater freedom with it? Yeah, you know, the movie actually we worked on it for a pretty long time. I had almost a full year to work on the movie. Okay. And it went through a lot of changes in the picture and the style and the pacing. So we saw the music evolve a lot. So I think what we thought it was going to start out with changed into something later on that was a little different than what we thought, but everybody was pretty happy with where it went to. I mean. So yeah, it did evolve and it did kind of go a little crazier than we thought. I mean, I pictured how it was going to end was going to be a... Uh, you know, a little dramatic, but what we ended up with was something that's totally off the rail that just all disintegrated into chaos, so I got a little bit that shit happens. How about uh, the dynamics between working on that and then obviously working on Dark Places? Yeah, I mean, just really different films. I mean, the style is different. Mom was a horror movie, but we thought about it, we thought about it as a psychological drama. Oh, yeah. I mean, it had some, like, really light parts in it, too, and some, you know, funny parts in it. And it's a weird balance. You know, you kind of see... This horrific stuff happening and the light stuff happening, and yeah, you know, dark places was just pretty heavy the whole time. <laughs> it started at ten, it went to eleven. On yeah. But you know, Ma had a much broader scope of like what type of vibe it was giving you and what type of reaction it wanted the audience to have. When we saw in the theater people were screaming and laughing at parts that we thought were pretty scary, and you know, vice versa. So you know, it's just a type of movie. Different, different beast. <laughs> Is there a creative process that you go through when you're going through composing um, films? Yeah, I mean, I usually always start off with sound design, just coming up with cool textures and palettes and things for the things for the you know the total palette of the score. You know, watch it, we kind of get a vibe of like how dark and how light it is what the mood is of the movie and then I just come up with instruments and cool sounds I mean Ma Ma took a lot of sounds I made myself I played bassoon on the score I got some weird stuff out of it I played um, you know hang drum on the score and got some ideas out of it I had a little vocal stuff in there and some rough glass instruments in it so I had all these weird ideas that kind of started out with and then you start filtering it down through the movie and seeing where it works so yeah that's kind of usually where it starts at it's just so, Ma was a pretty much, I think it was an original concept idea and everything. I thought it was really unique. And Critters, and Critters is obviously, I mean, I think everyone at some point had a fear of Critters back in the day, but you're, doing, you're being part of the reboot. Um, is there any, is there any like comparison to the original to Uh, I couldn't answer it. The man you want for critters. Oh, you didn't do critters? That's Russ. I thought you did that as well, too. Okay. I wish. <laughs> Russ is doing it. Okay, okay. Sorry about that. Oh, do you have any upcoming projects that we can talk about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I got another horror movie right now called Mr. Whisper. Okay. It'll be out next year. Okay. It's a much darker horror movie. Pretty intense stuff. We'll put that in the top one. Can't tell you. Oh. It's still, we're still in production. Right? Okay. okay. Or we're post production okay. right now. But okay. Yeah, it'll be out. It'll be out sometime next year. Do you get any motivation? Um, or where do you find? Excuse me. Where do you find motivation when it comes to uh, producing horror films? Over and over? I mean, again, Dark Places. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I get really lucky. I actually do a lot of genres. I, I did I did a TV series for ABC last year called The Fix, which was about as far away from a horror movie as you can get. I did a video game in between that. So I get to change gears a lot. I get to kind of cleanse the palette and... Uh, it actually it helps a lot, you know, when you find yourself living in a horror movie for a while and then you change gears and do something a little more action-oriented or a little more ambient, you know, psychedelic stuff. You come back to the horror stuff and you get this, like, you know, clean slate and fresh palette and you want to try new stuff on it. So, you know, I don't know if it's necessarily an inspiration as much as just getting to change gears and do different stuff that keeps it fresh. I, I guess in a comparison, is that like... A, a really nice person in real life, but just to play like a villain in acting, is it like one of those type of like dynamics? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I imagine if you're an actor that always plays a bad guy every time, you might get a little burnt out on it. You get to be the, you know, romantic leader, I don't know, funny guy, the sidekick, you probably get to this experience of having a you know, you go variety of roles. Oh, well, thank you so much yeah. for taking a look. I hope you have a good rest of your time. Yeah, great. Where are you guys from again? D.C. Yeah? Yeah. That's awesome. I work right outside D.C. Oh, really? Yeah. What? Like Fairfax. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Nice. Awesome. 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 So that's still recording, so that's great. So we yeah. right there. <laughs> what do you got? Is it website? Or? Yes. Uh, JVS. Yes, JVS. I can't even. I'll bring it to you, okay?